Hello, it is now 8 a.m. local times, and you are watching VTV News with me, Ming Hang. And now let's take a look at our headlines for today. Vietnam's foreign minister receives Philippines' counterpart and hosts talks to strengthen bilateral ties. A look back and analysis on two months of China's illegal activities in the EC. And enhancing media communications on practicing responsible tourism in Vietnam. In the first news, Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung met voters in Haiphong cities on Wednesday and briefed them on the outcomes of the recent National Assembly sessions. He pledged governmental support to restructure the economy, build an attractive investment climate and helped our businesses that find themselves in dire situations. Regarding the EC situation, many voters in Haiphong hope that the government would strengthen efforts to protect sovereignty as well as offer more policies to help fishermen to pursue their trade in Vietnam's rightful waters. Now on the same day, National Assembly Chairman Nguyen Sinh Hung met voters in the central province of Hà Tĩnh. Again, the EC tensions was at the centers of the discussion. The National Assembly Chairman stated that Vietnam wanted to maintain a positive relationship with China based on principles of peace and mutual benefits. However, he stressed that Vietnam would not back off when its sovereignty is under threat. For their part, local voters value the National Assembly issuance of a communique on the ECs at the most recent recent sessions of the legislatures. In other news, Philippine Secretary of Foreign Affairs Albert de Rosario is on a working visit to Vietnam from July the 2nd to the 3rd. On Wednesday, he met with his Vietnamese counterpart, Phạm Bình Bình, in Hanoi. The two foreign ministers discussed ways to strengthen bilateral ties in various fields and specifically the agreement signed during Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Sung's visit to the Philippines in May. The two sides highlighted the importance to their respective economy of collaborations in the fisheries and marine industry. Regarding regional cooperations, both foreign ministers pledged to continue building the ASEAN community. They share the view that ASEAN should show unity and responsibility when confronted with major issues like the EC tension. Speaking of China's recent activities in Vietnam's exclusive economic zone, the foreign minister said that all parties need to obey international law and refrain from violence when handling the situation. Now today, July, yesterday, July the 2nd, marked the two months since China first installed the orbit Haiyang Shiyou 981 in Vietnam's exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. For the past two months, Vietnam's law enforcement officers have been protecting the country's sovereignty at sea through peaceful measures, despite China's moves to escalate tensions in the area. Our next story will provide some expert analysis of the situation. China has consistently deployed over 100 vessels to protect its unlawful oil rig over the past number of weeks. During this time, the Chinese fleet has prevented Vietnamese fishermen from sailing in their traditional fishing grounds. China has started up the use of tugboats to block and ram Vietnamese vessels. At the beginning, China used to employ their Coast Guard vessels for this purpose. But the damage was too great, so they have started using tugboats instead. The Chinese Foreign Ministry has claimed that China does not use military ships to protect the Arctic, which is untrue. I can confirm that six times of China military ships have frequented the area around the Arctic. Despite Vietnam's call for diplomatic dialogue and China's removal of the oil rig, China has only escalated tension in the East Sea. Recently, Chinese State Councillor Jiang Jiechi paid an official visit to Vietnam. However, no improvement in the situation was promised. China is using the Arctic as a tool to change the status quo in the East Sea. China's recent actions, like the release of a new national map claiming that most of the East Sea all serve to back this up. China is acting according to a well-defined plan to become maritime power in Asia. 
I think that China's unlawful activities in the EC have somehow forged a stronger bond among all Vietnamese people. This patriotism is something that we should be proud of. For every Vietnamese person, national sovereignty is a strongly felt and inviolable right. Having been through various struggles for freedom and independence, the Vietnamese nation is known for its spirit of solidarity. Protecting the nation's sovereignty is the responsibility of each Vietnamese citizen. This message will continue to be sent out to people across the country as Vietnam maintains its peaceful yet resolute stance in the East Sea. On Wednesday, Vietnamese forces observed the Chinese fighter's aircraft J-11 flying about 3,000 meters above the orbit 981. Vietnamese forces also noticed the Chinese aircraft Y-8X coming from Ling Shui's in Hainan Islands to the orbit. An unidentified helicopter was also seen flying up from the Yulin Naval Base and back. More updates in the following. According to the Vietnam Coast Guard, China's fleet protecting the oil rig on Wednesday consisted of 118 vessels. Among them were six military ships. The vessels arranged themselves into three rings around the rig and were always prepared to harass and ram Vietnamese vessels should they move in to close. The Vietnam Coast Guard and Fisheries Surveillance Forces operated 10 to 12 nautical miles from the oil rig Hai Yang Shi 981. Via loudspeakers, they requested that China respect Vietnam's sovereignty and remove its oil rig and its coach vessels from Vietnam's waters. Not just last week, the Vietnam embassies in Bulgaria met with the Vietnamese communities to raise funds to support the Coast Guard forces that are performing their duties in the EC. The overseas Vietnamese and staff from the embassies raised 3,862 U.S. dollars. At the meetings, Ambassador Le Duc Liu also stressed that overseas Vietnamese remain determined to protect their country. In addition, 2,000 U.S. dollars was collected to support the victims, victims of recent storms that recently hit Varna, Dabrik and Velikot and Tarnovo. These activities underline the close ties and long-term friendships between Vietnam and Bulgaria. A project titled Hoang Sa, The Painful Loss, was filmed three years ago. It chronicles the stories of fishermen on the Lisan Islands who have suffered from attacks and abuse by Chinese forces. Our VTV reporters held an exclusive interview with Andres Meras, the film's director. Thank you for taking the time. So what motivated you to make the film? I first heard the story of a fisherman called Diêu Viet. He was arrested four times by Chinese forces and was imprisoned on a Fulham island for more than one month. His fishing boat was also seized and he went bankrupt. I sympathized with his unfortunate situation and wanted to do something about it. Besides fishermen who are lost at sea, are there any other messages that you want to deliver to the audience? The man lost all his property after being attacked by Chinese ships. When I asked him whether he regretted fishing near Huang Sa, he was surprised. Huang Sha is a traditional Vietnamese fishing ground, so there is no shame in protecting it. Now he cannot fish, but Huang Sha has a place in his heart. I was touched to hear that. What were your deepest impressions during the filmmaking? At the end of the filming process, I captured a very touching moment. It's about an empty tomb. Although many of us are unfamiliar with the concept, they are common among fishermen. The body of a lost fisherman is replaced with a clay statue so that his family and colleagues can pay tribute to him. They make an all-out effort to regain their property stolen by nature or enemy forces. It shows the nation's undaunted stance in its struggle. What significance did the film have when it was screened in different countries? 
The film simultaneously shows the inhumane acts Chinese aggressors inflict on Vietnamese fishermen in the central region and the Vietnamese people's determination to continue fishing in the traditional grounds. Despite poverty and the risks involved, Vietnamese people will never give up their mission to protect national sovereignty. Thank you so much for the interview. Now, after being screened in many countries like France, Czech, Germany, Poland and more, Andres Menras has financed 30,000 euros to donate and support for the fishermen in Lysern Islands. He expects to launch another film project featuring the life of fishermen living in the seas near Hwangsa Islands. Let's now move on to some business news. Bangning Province handed a one billion U.S. dollars investment license to Samsung Displays on Wednesday. This project is considered the biggest foreign investment project since the beginning of the year and goes a long way towards guaranteeing the trust of foreign investors in Vietnam's investment environment. The 40 hectares plant will be built in Yen Phong Industrial Zone, producing various kinds of LCD screens for use in medical, audio, or video equipment. Once operational, the plan is expected to create 8,000 jobs for local people and generate a revenue of 6 billion U.S. dollars each year. From the beginning of 2014, Bangning Province has attracted more than 1.4 billion U.S. dollars in foreign investment. With some 47 social housing projects across the country, Vietnam is currently meant to supply more than 10,000 affordable apartments to the market. However, as many projects still list a high price, low-income home buyers are finding it difficult to afford an apartment in social housing projects. The following report looks into the situations in Ho Chi Minh City, the southern half of Vietnam. This plot of land belongs to a social housing project in Ho Chi Minh City. Because of the poor infrastructure of the surrounding area, many home buyers have been reluctant to pay for property here, even if the price is less than 50,000 US dollars, the price that qualifies an apartment as part of the social housing project. According to the opinion surveyed by VTV reporters, location is the main reason for low-income customers to refuse joining the social housing project here. This is very I am considering a house in Tanbing district. However, as I work in district number one, it is not convenient at all. On average, a worker in Vietnam earns about 250 US dollars per month. Therefore, a couple with an average income must spend at least 20 years of tight household budgeting to afford a 50,000 US dollar house. As a result, social housing projects are still out of the reach of the needy. According to experts, out of 23 social housing projects in Ho Chi Minh City, only some are newly built. The majority of the projects are residential ones that have been recategorized. As owners of the projects receive preferential treatment in terms of funding under the government's bailout package, experts claim that the so-called social housing projects only help ease the owner's burden, not the home buyers. <laughs> Currently, some social housing projects sell out as soon as they hit the market. But many houses of this kind have even higher asking prices than commercial houses. As a result, these projects bring no change to the market. According to experts, social housing projects are only helpful when the relevant authorities can solve the imbalance between the actual demand of low-income home buyers and the selling prices. Partnering and innovations for sustainable agriculture is the main themes of the 2020 visions for Vietnam's agriculture sector. Among the measures being taken to develop the sector sustainably, the importance of technology, especially biotech, will help to boost productivity, qualities and product line efficiency. 
Sustainable agriculture was also the theme of a workshop held on Tuesday, hosted by the Institute for Strategic Development, the U.S. ASEAN Business Council, and the Vietnam Business Council for Sustainable Development. Although Vietnamese farming is highly productive, several product groups still struggle with issues related to quality assurance, food safety, and branding, according to a representative from the Party Central Committee's Commission for Economic Affairs. Low quality produce results in contradictions like the country's annual import of two tons of corn for animal feed. Corn grow domestically is categorized as grade 3, 4, or 5, while imported corn meat grade 1 or 2. According to experts, seed quality is key to improving productivity. Improvements can be made by using better seeds or genetically modified crops or GMC. GMC might be a good option. For example, genetically modified corns, if proven to protect soil quality, require less water and has better resistance. The application of modern technology not only helps corn adapt to various environment conditions, but also improves productivity. The next step is to equip farmers with this technology. Technology should be applied and adapted to different conditions in different regions. For example, in mountainous area, if we introduce too many genetically modified crops, local crops will be affected. Participants at the workshop agreed that in terms of current development, Vietnam needs to balance between a production point of view towards developing organic agriculture versus genetically modified agriculture in order to increase crop value while ensuring food security. Here is good news for anyone who would like to travel to Japan. National flag carriers Vietnam Airlines launched its first direct flight from Nội International Airport in Hanoi to Haneda Airport in Tokyo on Tuesday. The new Hanoi Haneda daily flight departs at 8 a.m. each day from Nội International Airport. Initially, the airline will use Everett's A321 aircraft. The airline currently conducts daily flights from nine international air routes connecting Vietnam to Japan. In 2012, Haneda airports welcomed nearly 67 million passengers, becoming the fourth business airport across the globe and second largest in the Asia region. Still to come on VTV News, Vietnam's efforts in maternal child health care were phrased among experts at global forums in Johannesburg, South Africa. And later on, let's learn how to enhance media communications on practicing responsible tourism in Vietnam. Stay with us. Exotic Vietnam is an intriguing blend of many charms. This land is where all manner of stunning landscapes await like a visual feast, rivaled only by the beauty of its people and their abundantly rich tradition and culture. Here is where you can relive the past in richest color or live it up in the bright lights of the big city. With so much more to offer, Vietnam is simply unforgettable. Welcome back to VTV News live from Hanoi. Now, Russia is keen to beef up cooperations with institutions in the Asia-Pacific region, including ASEAN. This was confirmed by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov at a meeting with ASEAN Secretary General Li Lungming in Moscow on Tuesday. Lavrov also appreciated ASEAN's efforts to create leading cooperation mechanism in the region, including the ASEAN Regional Forums and the ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting. For his part, the ASEAN leaders spoke highly of Russia's contributions to ASEAN cooperations and the partnerships between the two sides. During his visit, Secretary General Ming is scheduled to meet representatives of the Russian government and agencies and Secretary Generals of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Dmitry Menzensev. The People's Committees of Barrio Vungto Province announced the establishment of a Japan desk on Tuesday. The desk will focus on enhancing coordination between local authorities to solve difficulties faced by Japanese investors in Vietnam, promoting the image of Barrio Vungto Province, and improving investment environment by working with the Japan desk in Ho Chi Minh City. On the same day, the provincial committees opened a Japan Task Force office in the Department of Planning and Investment and signed 
signed a memorandum with Mizuho Bank from Japan to promote a Japanese investment. Health experts from around the world have praised Vietnam for its effort and achievements in maternal and children's health care at a global forum held in Johannesburg, South Africa. At the event, which ran from June the 30th to July 1st, international experts also expressed their wish to work with Vietnam in fulfilling the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs. Vietnamese Health Minister Nguyen Thị Kim Tiến delivered a speech at a special meeting of the forum in which she described multi-sector cooperation as one of the key factors to successfully carrying out maternal and child health care activities. The medical sector has managed to reduce the rate of maternal fertility from 233 out of 100,000 lives in 1990 to 62 last year. The figures for under five child fatalities were reduced from 59 deaths per 1,000 in 1990 to 23. The proportions of malnourished Children's under five was also cut down to 15.3 percent from 41 percent. The 2014 meetings of the Pacific Asia Travel Associations, or PATA, opened on Wednesday in Ho Chi Minh City. With the themes of tourism strategies for development of the Asia Pacific, the meeting drew the participations of many tourism experts, researchers, and authorities from 17 countries in the region. The program is aimed at maintaining and implementing, as well as researching the most advantageous uh, tourism strategies into the future. The meeting hopes to boost activity to promote tourism for all members of the association. As part of the meeting's agenda, many programmers were discussed which will support tourism projects and attract visitors. PATA 2014 is a good chance for Ho Chi Minh City to promote its image and highlight its tourism potential to other countries. The meeting will draw to a close on July the 7th. Also on Wednesday, a roundtable uh, round meetings a themes enhancing media communication on practicing responsible tourism took place in Hanoi. The meeting was part of the Environmentally and Socially Responsible Tourism Capacity Development Program, or ESRT, funded by the European Union. Although prevalent in many developed countries, this specific approach to tourism is not yet the norm here. These tourists are going sightseeing by tram car and cyclo to protect the environment. Many handicraft villages have been established to help improve the life of minorities. These are just a few examples of responsible tourism, which has as its base a sustainable foundation. However, it takes a strong media campaign to firmly establish it as a complete system. Responsible tourism development is not universal yet. Thus, we have to strengthen media communication so that we can agree on basic concepts of responsible tourism. Then we can develop policies to promote this form of tourism. Many attendants at the meeting agree that responsible tourism entails economic, social and environmental responsibilities. Moreover, people working in the sector should learn how to practice responsible tourism via media communication. Not only should we raise awareness of responsible tourism via media communication, we also have to hold training courses on this subject. Funded by the European Union, the ESRT program in Vietnam is being implemented from 2011 to 2015 and has a budget of 12.1 million euros. This program has already achieved many significant accomplishments so far. We have worked already with many uh, Vietnamese operators um, when we, for example, do familiarization trips to the northern provinces. So we help them to um, uh, or we facilitate meetings in the provinces in order to enhance the product development on uh, including responsible uh, practices. As part of Vietnam's tourism development strategies, responsible tourism aims to protect cultural heritage while achieving long-term and sustainable economic and social benefits. Media communication is an essential part of raising awareness and implementing this form of tourism. 
Late last year, UNESCO recognized Vietnam's Don Ca Tai Tu, or Southern Folk Music, as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. However, how to further develop this art form to justify this prestigious conferral is still a question that authorities in the southern provinces are mulling over. There are currently 2,200 Don Ca Tai Tu clubs operating in the south of Vietnam with nearly 14,000 participants. However, these clubs are not well organized and the instruction available for the younger generation is quite limited. This is a problem in the conversation and further development of Don Ca Tai Tu. There needs to be a practical solution to this issue. How can we conserve southern folk music if we don't do anything after the recognition? We must raise public awareness on this issue, and the provincial authorities should not wait for the direction of the government. They should develop plans themselves if possible. We must invest more in conservation and development. We need specific investment plans for teaching and training. Researchers and artists also believe that making the community understand the value of the art form is important. Dun Ca Tai Tu teaching in school needs to be further promoted, and there needs to be more Dun Ca Tai Tu performances and festivals. This is one of the conversation missions that the Southern Provincial Authorities committed to when UNESCO granted the Heritage Award. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism has proposed that the government issue a national action plan on the conservation of Nguyen Ca Tai Tu. The Ministry is also planning to honor and award Nguyen Ca Tai Tu artists. With all the plans and attention from the government, hopefully this unique art form will go from strength to strength in the future. The annual nationwide university entrance exams that take place in July are a huge event. For many Vietnamese, admissions to a university can be a doorway to a better life. And within the, uh, several months now, uh, thousands of examinees and their parents have been flocking to big cities in preparation for the exam. But not all of them are lucky enough to find accommodation at a reasonable price. Let's see how locals in Binh Dinh province are supporting these candidates. Nguyễn Ngọc Anh from Quy Nhân City in Bình Định Province offers free accommodation for examinees during the university entrance exam period. His family is busy rearranging their house to make room for examinees. Although the house is not very spacious, Ngọc Anh has volunteered to do this for the last four years. I am very happy to be able to help the examinees. It is great if I can see them succeed and be part of that. Many pagodas in Binh Dinh province also offer meaningful support. This year, Tường Quang Pagoda is buying basic amenities to prepare comfortable free shelter for 1,000 candidates. The pagoda will also offer free transport to exam locations. We always want to provide the best conditions for the candidates so they can get the best results in their exams. This year, the number of examinees in Quinyan City is estimated to reach over 62,000, and a shortage of accommodations will be unavoidable. Therefore, youth volunteers in Binh Dinh are mobilizing local help to support candidates. We have collected detailed information about cheap accommodation within the city. We have also confirmed 3,000 free places to stay, and we are looking for more. This precious support from local people is expected to give candidates the boost they need to perform to the best of their abilities. And now, as usual, before saying goodbye, let's take a look at our updated weather forecast.
and that is all we have for you at this hour. You can always log on to our address at vtv4.vn to watch this program again and for more updates. Thank you very much for staying here with us and goodbye for now from Hanoi. Mm -hmm.